Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. This morning is already April 5th, Palm Sunday. And as we begin to celebrate Holy Week, uh, we have a couple hymns for you this morning. The service, the printed service, you should find on your emails. It should have print, uh, emailed to you earlier this morning, so you can follow along in the service. And please also sing along with the hymns. And uh, this is the first Sunday uh, since Christmas, somewhere in there, since Edie has been back. So she'll be accompanying the music this morning. So you'll hear her back on organ. Andy will be singing again. Uh, we flipped a coin and said he should sing instead of me. And that's a good thing. So we'll do that. But, uh, the, the service is the litany for Palm Sunday as printed in your bulletin. We begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusty and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. We sing our first hymn, hymn number 442. Oh, glory, Lord, 
comes to mind in your head. If you're a baseball fan, well, of course, glory means the twins winning the World Series. If you love football, well, then glory only comes with victory in the Super Bowl. The world has so many ideas and suggestions for us on where we can find glory. But today's gospel lesson teaches that glory is something Christians find in unlikely places. Real glory is found in death and in serving our neighbor. The text for Palm Sunday takes place just a few days before Jesus' crucifixion. And when word came to Jesus that a group of God-fearing Greeks were wanting to see him, Jesus said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. You see, Jesus knew that the end of his mission was just about over. So what did Jesus mean by glorified? Jesus would find glory in a very unlikely way. And here's how Jesus explains glory. He says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Glory in death? Death doesn't sound very glorious. It signals defeat, in fact. Since when do people think that there is anything glorious in death? And how can Jesus say that death is glorious? Well, let's take a look at what is glorious about our Savior's death. Jesus in Scripture uses the illustration of the seed to help us. And just as the purpose of the seed is to be buried in the ground where it can germinate and grow into something productive, Jesus wants you and I to know that the purpose of his coming into this world was to be buried. Jesus came to die and pay for our sins. But death would not be the end of Jesus. Just as a seed that is buried sprouts and grows into a seed-bearing plant or a fruit-bearing tree, so Jesus would come back to life and bear fruit, eternal life for all who believe in him. Therefore, Jesus' death on the cross was anything but a defeat. It was the beginning of his victory for you and I. 
When we understand the glorious nature of Jesus' death, we can begin to see how we too can find glory in death, our death, and in the death of every believer. You see, brothers and sisters, the death of a believer, just like the death of Jesus, is not the end. In fact, it is the beginning of an eternal glory in God's presence. Now, since death is only glorious for those who believe in Jesus for forgiveness, Jesus went on and said this, the man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If you want to find glory, don't look where the world looks. The world looks for glory in this life. It thinks that money or fame or athletic skill or good looks are what make a person glorious. These things, however, only produce a fading glory. For example, how many of you remember last year's MVP from the Super Bowl? Or how many of you remember last year's NBA champion? You see, the fact is, the glory of man fades faster than you can even grab hold of it. Just think about all of the politicians or the athletes, the movie stars or pop singers that were so popular a few years ago. and Now, no one even knows where they are anymore. Because this world can only give us fading glory, we must keep things in proper perspective, brothers and sisters. The life we have now it's nothing more than a seed. It really isn't that beautiful, nor is it the kind of glorious life that God intended us to have in the beginning. When we think that this life is the only one we have, we start to run after things that don't matter. We worry about things that don't matter. We think that a bigger job, a better job, or a bigger house, the latest video game, or a new car will make our lives more glorious. But that's just like playing dress up with Mr. Potato Head. You can dress up Mr. Potato Head. You can put him in some fancy clothes, a fancy hat, all kinds of accessories. But it doesn't change the fact that underneath all that clip-on clothing, Mr. Potato Head is still just a spun. In the same way, brothers and sisters, don't waste your time dressing up this life at the expense of losing your hold on the next life. This life is only a seed for the next life. Die a believer, and God will raise you to an eternal life, gloriously free from sin or pain or any kind of perilous thing that goes on in this world. You see, death is not the only unlikely place that a believer will find glory, though. A believer can also find glory in their service. Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. The world says that if you have people serving you, well, then you've arrived. Then you've found true glory. But Jesus says, not so. Real glory comes from serving God and from serving one another. In God's eyes, the parent who faithfully changes the child's dirty diaper out of love and, and uh, thankfulness to God for giving him that child, or the one who gets her hands dirty scrubbing the house, scrubbing in behalf of the Lord, will receive more glory than the most successful professional athlete or movie star will ever get when they could care less about serving the Lord. Now, sure, that glory might not be evident in this life. It will only be evident in the next life. But it's a glory that we certainly don't want to miss out on, do we? Knowing that our purpose in life is to serve God will move us to pray that God's name be glorified in everything that we do and experience. Although the thoughts of his approaching death twisted Jesus' stomach and knots, and you can hear it when he prays. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. What about you? As we've been going through this pandemic and being all tied up and locked in, 
Is that what your prayer has been? Father, glorify your name. Is that what we pray when we're faced with difficulty? Instead, isn't our first request usually, Father, save me from this. Get me out of here. And I'm not saying it's wrong to pray for God to deliver us from trouble. In fact, it's something that God wants us to do, brothers and sisters. But let us do so with humility. We must remember also to pray, Thy will be done, just as Jesus did. You see, there are times when God may not choose to answer our prayers the way that we want, because he wants to use our suffering for his glory. Just think back last week to last week's lesson. That's what his, his plan was for Lazarus, wasn't it? Jesus let him suffer the pain of death before he came to his aid and raised him back to life. He did this so that you and I could have the confidence that Jesus does indeed have the power over life and death. All of us will go through tough times. All of us will go through things that we just as soon forget. But God allows us to go through them anyway. Brothers and sisters, no matter what time, tough times you are going through, remember that Jesus Christ endured in his beatings at the hands of the Roman soldiers and in his suffering and death upon that cross. He endured everything so that you and I would be able to live forever with him in heaven. Trust God that through these trials that we are going through as a nation and as a world right now, that, that God is refining our faith, that he is putting us on display so that others will marvel at the strength that he gives us to get through these trials. Trust that in the midst of pain, in the midst of loneliness and sorrow, God's glory is right there with you, that it will never leave you or forsake you. You see, real glory is found in Jesus. It's found in death. Jesus is death. And even the death of believers, God's glory is found. Glory is also found in Christian service. It is even found in suffering. So may God help us remember these truths so that we keep our faith focused on Jesus until he calls us to enjoy the real, lasting, visible glories of heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. We now continue with our prayers. And we begin with the collect for the Sunday of the Passion. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widow and the orphan, and for all those in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress, in mercy put an end to the pandemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer, and comfort all that mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors, and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I thank, thank you, you, my Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Please join with us as we sing hymn number 685. Let us ever walk with Jesus. Sin. And the grave that shot 
that's the sin Shall but prove the gate to heaven Jesus, here with you I die There to live with you on high Let us also live with Jesus He has risen from the dead That to life we may awaken Jesus, you are now our head We are your own living members Where you live there we shall be In your presence constantly Living there with you forever Jesus, let me faithful be Life eternal grant to me Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen.